So the other you know, thing that comes to mind is, is when you're talking about these um, compounds that our gut isn't used to, um, antibiotics. Um, and that's obviously, you know, antibiotics have their place. If it's a life or death situation, you know, prescribe me antibiotics, you know. <laughs> but the problem is that they're prescribed um, in many not life or death situations. In fact, they're very overprescribed for just things that are not necessary, mm. you know, sinus infection or, you know, a cold, common cold. Mm -hmm. um, what effect does just even having like a single dose of antibiotics have on your gut? you know, microbiome and and how can we, you know, recover from that? Mm -hmm. Like what are the best ways we can recover from that? Yes, I think we have to realize that when antibiotics were developed, there was no um, thought placed on gut microbes. These are not drugs that were designed in any way to spare the bacteria that live in our gut. Most antibiotics that we take are in fact designed to be broad spe spectrum to kill a wide variety of microbes so that they can be used for many different types of infection. And what we're finding is that these antibiotics do wreak havoc on our, on our gut. So many of the microbes that, that are beneficial that inhabit us are killed by these antibiotics. And what we're finding is that um, Often the microbiota, there is a, it is able to rebound, but often it is not able to rebound exactly as it was before. And from studies done others at Stanford, not us, but a, a colleague of ours, David Relman, they showed that multiple with multiple rounds of antibiotics, with each additional round, there's a, another sort of hit that the microbiota takes that makes it less likely to recover. So with each additional round of antibiotics, they saw like an increased deterioration of the, of the bacteria, the, the community that was there, in a way that it was not able to go back to the state that it was before. Um, we don't know exactly what that means, but there's a lot of evidence that um, for example, children that go on multiple rounds of antibiotics are more likely to develop a lot of these autoimmune diseases like asthma and allergies. And so there's evidence that this lot of, lot of antibiotic use is detrimental for our health. And then, you know, children that take antibiotics but say have a family pet. So there's an example of bringing microbes back into our world by you know, having an animal, that those children are somewhat protective from the antibiotic effects just through increased uh, environmental microbial exposure. So there is kind of this too, you know, we're killing microbes with the antibiotics, but then if we can reintroduce um, more microbes, so in cases where you really do need antibiotics, we need to think about ways of, of repopulating that community in a beneficial way to kind of mitigate the effects that antibiotics have on our gut. And you know, I, I think it's important to recognize that um, antibiotics are wonderful drugs if they're used appropriately. And I think the problem was that for many years they were used without recognition that there's a cost associated. Mm -hmm. I think the first cost that was recognized was the, um, the idea of antibiotic resistance. And if antibiotics are overused, you can actually get pathogens that are resistant to these drugs that then are very difficult to eradicate. And I think now there's a second wave of recognition for um, reasons to limit antibiotic use, which is that there's a cost associated with harming our resident microbes. And I think from a very practical sense, you know, just talking with people that work in our lab and other people that are in the field of microbiota research, um, if you have a conversation with your physician and let them know that you don't expect antibiotics every time you get sick, that if a wait and see approach is appropriate, um, that you're comfortable with that. Um, a lot of times physicians will not prescribe antibiotics when they otherwise would. We've heard of physicians that would say things like, I thought you wanted antibiotics. I'm fine with not giving you any. And so I think it's just important for people to understand that every time they take antibiotics, they're harming this really important part of their biology. And if they can avoid it, that that's certainly a, a better course of action.